What is up, everybody? And welcome back to the Serie A Audio Experience with IFTV. Guys, we got two guests today because Antonio is in Italy. You might have seen the videos that he's sending us in body. This guy's asking everybody if Cassano's the best. <laughs> that, that whole town, I swear to God, that whole town thinks Cassano's the best player. Of course. He's so about us, you know? <laughs> Peter is, is still in Europe. He's in Italy. I actually bumped into him. You, he ran into him. At the Inter game, right? And we got the growing up Italian guys right here with us. Two out of the three, at least. We got Sabino and we got Rocco. Yo. Guys, Thanks for having us, man. Bro, you guys are the first guests. On the podcast. Oh, ah. holy shit. That's an yeah, honor. Yeah, are. you are. Jeez. I think yeah. you were the first guests on ours, right? Or one of them? Yeah, they, they were. Number episode four. Yeah, that was we you guys. Bro, we're going to have to kick you guys out right now. <laughs> 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 man, no. it's, been, it's, been, it's been a hell of a ride, though, man. I know. Both Yo. of our pages are killing, you know? You're doing well. Yo, I love your guys. Um, so if you guys don't know them, you got to check them out on, on Instagram and their podcast, Growing Up Italian. I got to say, as an Italian myself, yo, I can relate to so many of those posts and even Mike sometimes, too. He says, like, some of them are it's related pretty, to Greek. It's pretty funny, though. It's basically, like, a daily, uh, the daily thing of an Italian and uh, the stereotypical <laughs> thing. Growing yeah. up Italian. Yeah. And, exactly. uh, it explains it. I appreciate the shout-out, man. Funny and captions, but give them a follow, guys. Yeah, Re real quick, all the time, whenever we ask people, like, what's some episodes you want to hear? They say, more soccer. And I'm like, listen, if you want to listen to soccer, go to IFTV. Thank you, we'll cover, like, you know... Stuff like today, yeah, you know, La, La, La Nazionale, because that's like the most important, like soccer. To us. Yeah, yeah. The and passion that runs with us is like so great. Um, we'll get into the, we'll get into your guys' story. I want to talk about you guys a lot too. Um, let's talk about the national team first because I know everybody clicking into this video feels a sigh of relief that I think everybody at this table can feel oh, right now. It's about time. It's been there was a stat that Italy hasn't won an official match in 26 years by six goals by this wow. margin. And I know that under Ventura, we never had a win more than one zero. Yeah. So it's a sigh of relief where you score a goal and you keep attacking. And I felt mm. like that's Italy under Mancini. Yep. Um, we started off well, the first, we, you know, we had a first one over Finland, um, who's, you know, pretty tough opponent. We scored pretty early, but yeah. Ella scored in what? Seventh four. minute. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right away, right, right away. away. We, and we got, we got a good win. We got a good win. There were signs that showed positive stuff. The one guy that we wanted to see, though, was uh, Quayarella. Yeah. Starting. And, uh, man, he started. In, in the first game, he actually came on a little late. Like, 75th minute. Yeah. I yeah. wanted to see him, like, in the 65th minute. I was yeah, like, it's time. He had time. some chances, me though. Too. Dude, he hit yeah. the post, right? He had yeah. another chance. The second he came in, he created. Two touches. Yeah. Two touches. He almost created two goals. Instant impact. Incredible. incredible. Yeah. More, he did more than Cheeto and Mobile did in the whole 75 minutes. Cheeto, yeah. Cheeto Mobile Mike, had that Mike really. Mike Mobile fan, but. I'm not he had Mobile, that, I'm just saying. He had a nice assist to Keen for the second half. He just the ball off exactly wow better. no credit i'm just ball saying when, oh, when, i'm just saying i like a striker that's a killer yes, you know yes. and i just feel like immobile and pelotti are not killers yeah. and i if they become it i'm happy but i just wanted to see quietella so i give yeah. i think that this you know we're gonna have a post tomorrow about who is the mvp of this and we could go through the players but i think mancini did a great job mm -hmm. you know he came out saying yo we're gonna have an attacking philosophy mm -hmm. Uh, after the first game, he said, yo, we need to do better in attacking phase. You know, this was good. This was good. And I feel like our defense is pretty solid. Our defense and midfield's insane. Our defense and our midfield is so good. We have mm -hmm. so many options and we're not even, we're still hit with injury. Yeah, you know? Insignia, Chiesa. Yeah, and even in the back though, Calabria is with the U21s, yeah. Conti. Has not been fully fit mm -hmm. this entire Florenzi season. Florenzi injured, right? Fl Florenzi, yeah. yeah. Um, Florenzi's banged up. So... I, I really feel good about that. We have it's we have a lot attack. of players. It's we have a lot of players. The man. attack has always been the question. And he's given faith. Mancini's given faith. Where Ventura didn't want to give faith to the youngsters. Yep. Starting Moise Keane. And this kid his first, has it his all, first, man. His first appearance, too. His first debut. Yeah, this guy's something the special, yo. He, 19. He, him with the ball at his feet, it's it's crazy to Bro. see. So they and announced it during the game. And he scored. He on was his the youngest sport. forward to start since 1912 for Italy. He's the second youngest goal scorer in Italy's history. That's insane. And the thing, listen, the thing that I keep saying, I went on Jimmy Conrad's podcast, you know, we're talking about Italy. I went on a few other podcasts, and I feel like, and you guys, let me know if you feel the same way, and everybody out there, we have talent now, where everybody's been saying we don't have talent, mm -hmm. but even more than the skill... I feel like our youngsters have confidence. Yes. Like, I love that Keen Absolutely. is not scared to take on his man. While in the past, we might have seen some Italians who they have the skill, but they don't have the confidence that comes with playing and, and just having it naturally. Yep. Mm -hmm. And these guys have it. Same thing with Kiesa, same thing with a few of the guys. 
in uh, the game of, in Finland, I felt like we were a little like, you know, we were holding back a little bit. Like there was a couple of plays like on top of the box where I felt Jorginho should have shot it and he was like, was he wasn't shooting. Yeah. You know what I mean? Italy now it's like everybody's yeah. letting loose. Like there, even Verratti They were scored. definitely more conservative on that. How one. many shots did we have against, the first game? against Liechtenstein? I think 40 something. Yeah, yeah that's that's absolutely just, insane. That's, 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 that's something we've never seen before. You know, uh, Sabino being the oldest here, but in our lifetime, like you said, the last time Italy won 6-0 in an international game was 26 years ago. We have never seen that in our lifetime. Yeah, sure. That's well, something even to three be proud zeros, of. Even like four zeros. Like. Yeah, that's unheard of, too. Yeah. And clean sheets, too. I think we didn't have four clean sheets in a yeah, row. Now five since Conte. Yeah, Sidigu played really well today. Yeah, you know, he, obviously there wasn't a, a much of yeah, an attack much, on Lee Steiner. He was probably but... sleeping enough, bro. Yeah, he had one. Nah, he Sidigu had... was hanging out. He had yeah, a nice save. Yeah, that was one. It was, no, was one. He was on Instagram. I give him credit. He was on Instagram. He was on Instagram. his feet. Donnarumma is the starter, though. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. And everybody was mad that he wasn't starting. But before, I almost forgot, guys. I want to I want to say real quick, a little plug. The Calcio Tees, the new Calcio Drop is going to be on Saturday, 12 p.m. We got new colors all coming out. I'm rocking one of them. Rocco is rocking one of them. Uh, the silver. I had to be different, man. Yeah, you know, you're different. I, I have to be different. And Mike, too. Mike, too. He's not wearing the, the new ones. So the new ones are coming out Saturday, March 30th. At the top of the description, you could sign up for the email list. Um, once they sell out, we don't know when we're going to release them. So quick drop. Also on Instagram, you could set a countdown. So 12 p.m. Eastern time. Listen, I'm an Inter fan, but I liked the, the other shirt. Oh, no, it's they, they didn't see that one. I know, one. that's they super. They didn't see that one. That's <laughs> exclusive. Some, that's exclusive. They got some they're getting a sneak peek, boys. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, I had to throw that in there. Uh, let, let's continue with the Azuri talk. Again, just feels so good to finally have a team that's passionate and, and can perform and is not, not scared. And I know a lot of people, the first thing everybody's going to say right now is, Boys, relax. You beat Liechtenstein and right, Finland. Right, right. But let me be honest. These are with games you, we'll tie in the past. We, you know? We've never been one to take like we usually struggle against some smaller teams. Yep. You know, Italy in the past, and I think that it's a good sign forward. And finally, some life is in is in the air. The guys can, the guys you know? can remain a little bit more calm. You know, there was some struggles with goals. And, yo, there's still so much room for us to grow. But I think great job by Mancini in giving life to the youngsters. Yeah. I, I, what I love seeing from this Italy team is, like, they're playing with something to prove this time around. Last time, they kind of took a backseat in, uh, on route to the World Cup. We lost to these horrible teams and nations, to say the least. It was quite embarrassing as an Italian seeing that. And I was there. I was I was. In yeah, Mark the, was the, the one against Sweden, yeah. not the ones before. But yeah, the, the one against Sweden was a heartbreaker, man. But it was too little too yeah, late at that point. We didn't deserve to get in yeah, at exactly. that point. Let's just be I real agree. here. But I'm done talking about 2016. If 2016 yeah. is what makes us better in the future, then I'll take it. You know, I'll eat that L and let's move forward 2018. With, with this young core. And, uh, you know, yeah, 2018, I meant to say. But, well, <laughs> well, we'll keep building with this young core because we got a bunch of these young studs. Coming up, and I'm excited to see what they can bring to the table. I'll, I'll tell you one thing, though. Italy matches up very well against all those top teams. You think so? I, I definitely I was, think I was so. going to bring they're that scared, up. They're scared to play us. You think so? Talent, 100%. Talent-wise, I definitely agree with you. When, uh, when's the last time we we felt... What were we going to say? You were going to say talent-wise, they, they match talent up? Talent-wise, definitely match up. Maybe, uh, like, uh, right now I'm thinking of France. Right now, yeah, France, Italy, France, France, France is the team. No, though, France is. But, yo, in yeah. terms of talent, even though France, you could say, has more experience, is more uh, known They don't want to play Italy, You can say they are. Dude, they, they uh, do have France right now. Is, Italy don't really have anything to lose, and if they play each other, France has everything to lose. Right, Italy exactly. looking good right now. Italy have something to prove. No, yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go that far. I think is France is France is on a completely different level, but also because yeah. their youngsters are playing. And Mbappe starts at PSG, and he's 19, 20 years yeah, old. Yeah, he's, he's so a phenomenon. I think that Jimmy, like when I was on Jimmy, he was asking me about Spain. He's like Spain and Brazil, who have youngsters coming up. He was comparing them, and he was mm -hmm. saying. Let's see, can Italy Germany be on too, that level? Germany, Germany yeah. too, man. Yeah, Germany too. They're all those countries that didn't really perform at the World Cup, you know, Spain and, and Germany didn't really do much, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I think that we're in the same boat in that sense, but we still have a long way to go. And the mix of experience and and youth, right? A lot of people were against Quayarella. Mike and I, I got to be honest, we were on a hype train since the beginning of the season. And my dad, Peter, and Antonio were all against it at first. Um, and slowly by, but surely, we were convincing them that, I mean, he was doing the convincing, that you should call him up. Because to me, sometimes I feel like Italy, we took the stance a little bit too far. So let me give you an example. Like, we're like, but Quietel is never going to be the starter in the 2022 World Cup. Yeah, but to get to the 2022 right. World Cup, 
You got to get through these qualifiers. Mm -hmm. So we almost had that sense of Whoever's ourselves. Whoever's the best player plays. We, we, had, we, had, that, we had that sense that yeah. we were already qualified for these tournaments that we're not qualified right, for. Right. And whoever's hot at the moment, you got to play. Everybody's going to say, oh, but he only scores penalties. Yo, penalties fucking matter in football. It's not as easy as it seems. It really isn't. So everyone's saying it's the easiest thing. It's like, yo, go, go do it then. Yeah, exactly. Penalty. That's what I said. Yo, yeah. talk to how many players have missed a penalty in the World Cup and ask them how easy it is. Yeah. Yo, it's yeah. good to have a player like ask that. Ask Roberto Baggio. Come on. Let's oh, be real I know. I know. It's a heartbreaker, but <laughs> bro, it's true, man. Baggio, I mean, we love you still, but I'm just, just saying. Yo, you Don't can't forgive be, me for that. But. You can't be perfect. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, but the Unless point the point of the matter is <laughs> the point of the matter is I like the mix of Chiellini still being there. I like Bonucci. Romagnoli. I like Romagnoli. Romagnoli. He's insane. Romagnoli's the on the younger side, but yeah. even he's more experienced. Yeah. But but Quayarella there. I think that only our player our youngsters only have everything to learn from them. Yeah. And that's absolutely. so important. You can't just go into a team with that's twenty years old to some yeah, of these tournaments, for you sure. know? So I'm I'm really happy on that on that sense, and also let's give a shout out to Barella, who is yep. the first Cagliari player since Davide Astori to score for the national team. Yeah, that, yeah, that meant a lot to them. Which I is, saw that. you know, you could see it in his face. There's a lot of passion, and there's a lot of things pushing this Italy from behind, um, and that was just another great moment where, yeah, really, really, really good from there. But Italy, so Italy definitely has some strikers, though, man. Oh, 100 percent, yeah. The strikers make me nervous, man. The thing is with the strikers, there's not like a Who's, like like Chiellini. Like there's not like a certain this. one. Let's that's do this. Yeah, thing. that's exactly it. Let, let's let's understand. do this. Mancini loves the four three three, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your front three to start in a match. Let's go around and say who would you who would your front three be? Front three. Ooh, mm. I'll start. I'll start. Since okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Quick. Right now, you're saying right now. Right, right now. Right. Like but tomorrow? and and no For injuries don't game. matter. Injuries don't matter. Okay. Okay. All right. I would do Chiesa on one side, right or left. Um, Quayrella in the middle and Keen, those three. That's what I do. Yeah, I would, I would like that, but I'm a Balotelli guy, man. I oh, think it's time. Shit. I, I think it's time to bring Balotelli. him up. I mean, you're gonna see him start the 2020 World like Euro Cup 100. Yo, I, forgot I think about Mancini that. Mancini's planting the seed right now. Yo, we could play because he said something. He released something he like. Did. Keen and Balotelli and I think he's play just, together. I just see like him planting the seed. That's interesting. Okay. And I could see Balotelli. Yeah, like, I, if, if I could change my answer, I would go with Balotelli. Uh, <laughs> Balotelli, Keen, and Chiesa. That's who I would do. Hmm. Interesting. And and Quayarella could come Quayarella off. come off the come bench. Come off the bench. Yeah. I'm give good us, with that. Give us a solid 20 minutes. I like that. But you would have to kind of reverse it a little bit, right? Or unless Keen stays on the wing or, you know, put one and two. Mm -hmm. but what do you think, Rob? I'm gonna just get this off my chest. Oh. I'm I'm tired of this immobile wave, man. Oh, man. This wave is the ship is the ship has sailed. This side of the table anymore. is good, bro. The, the ship has sailed with immobile. I can't deal with him being up there and us giving him so much responsibility. At this point, I'm just I'm I'm down to just you know part ways with immobile. He could have come off the 90th minute on a game we're winning 3-0. That's all he's getting though. But honestly, I hate to jump on the ship that you guys are on, but I I kind of agree with it. But I would put Quayarella in there starting. So I wouldn't bring him off the, the bench. I would have Moise uh, Kane on there. And then I would have Quayarella right up top, right in mid. Kiesa. And then Kiesa on the right, yeah. A healthy Kiesa, obviously. Hmm, I want to say, I, I want to change it up. I was going to say what you guys said, but I want, I want to do my own thing. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Up front, fine. I want to do Fabio, Moise Kane, and then Kiesa right behind them. Try something Fabio, different. Fabio, Moise Kane, striking duos, and then Kiesa so right behind similar. them. So, similar. Similar, yeah. Similar. I think we're all of that mindset. Yeah. You know, Bernadeschi was a talking point. I like Bernadeschi a lot. He's good. He's on. He, I love Bernadeschi. He, he, I don't. He didn't. He didn't have a great game though. Uh, he he, he messed up. Low. He messed up like those two. Like he should have crossed it and like he missed his target. Yeah. But I like Bernadeschi a lot, man. I see him more as a midfielder than anything. You know what yeah, I mean? A midfielder, even a winger. Yeah, or, I mean, like a, switches. Maybe a cam, yeah. but I don't know if he's in the good in the middle. Nah, I don't think so. I like he him doesn't a lot, have a man. real position, I feel like. Right, he's right. He's very yes, he's on the yeah. right. He's a, he's a, he works hard. That's the oh, yeah. thing that's beautiful about Italy. We have so many options right now. Yeah. Poli, what do you, you think know? about Polita? You're an Inter fan, so what do you think about Polita? He, he looked good today, too. Like, in the beginning, I felt like he was, like, you know, attacking really nice, and he had that one shot that yeah. almost went in. Yeah, he did. So, like, I like him there, too, but Chiesa is definitely... Yeah, Kez has got a, got a confidence too about him that I really like. Yeah. Right, let me revise my answer here. <laughs> oh shit! All right, since oh, Mike since Mike went with the the different formation too, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump on Mike's formation. You gonna put Immobile in? All right, no, hell no. <laughs> That's not definitely not. You gonna put Belotti in? All right. Uh, no shot. I'm gonna take out Kieza. 
Two up top. Bold. We're going to have Guayarela starting okay. next to uh, Kane. Or how do you say it? Bro, we don't know. We're still debating Moise that. Yeah. The talent, the they talent say saying Moise, Moise Ken. Ken. Moise Ken. I say Moise right. Ken. Moise Ken. And Moise healthy. Ken. <laughs> <laughs> Figure it out. Ken. <laughs> and uh, right behind them, Lorenzo Insigne. Oh, yeah. Mancini, take yeah. notes. Insigne, Insigne is the one that All right. everybody... So, the problem, really the right. problem with Insignia is if you're going to play Insignia and Verratti, they're too little. Like, we lose a lot of headers and stuff. Like, yeah, I mean, our whole midfield is... Players, our midfield yeah, is... Nifty, we got a small midfield. Uh, Zaniolo was also one that came off the bench um, this game. I, he didn't... He came I, off the yeah, bench he, first game, but really late. Yeah, really late. Uh, this one, we saw him a little bit more. Still very raw. You know, I, I, I wanted to see him start over Sensi, I was thinking, but... I think Mancini did the right thing. Sensi, congrats on Sensi too. He, scored, he scored one, yeah. Congrats on Pavoletti, his first, first debut. First, first and debut and scored. Yeah, and that was amazing. Cagliari touch. player too. Cagliari player too. Yo, shit, you're right. Damn, wow, that. two Cagliari players. That's awesome. When's, when's, that's a stat. When's the last yeah. time two Cagliari players scored? <laughs> See, that's yeah, another so. thing I love about this team. A lot of times in the past, it was strictly, not strictly, but it was mostly Juve players. Now look at how I much the Serie A has gotten more competitive and how... More Italian products we have Maybe that Juve are not with just Italian talent, not competitive. Like. Right, right, yeah, <laughs> but you know, in the sense of just being competitive, where it's gonna, not, bring it up it's there. not coming from the same team anymore, the same club. Like I yeah. love to see that it's, it's more variation. Yeah, around. that's yeah. good for Serie A in 100%. general. You know, and a lot of competition within. I mean, yeah, I mean, even especially Milan's been playing a lot of young Italians, which yep. is I was watching the U twenty one play. There's that kid Tonali. Phenomenal. From Brescia. Yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal. That kid, that kid's Pirlo. got all the qualities to become something. You know, like Ke- Keenan and uh, Zaniolo played, they were like roommates yeah, on yeah. the under-19 yeah, team. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. They were, so they, they, were, they were like best friends, they were saying. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you see them, they're always together. Like, uh, I think they sit next to each other on the bus and stuff. So it's like, there's a good environment around the mm-hmm. team. I feel like there's a great sense of, of everybody being happy and... Mm-hmm. We've together, been through yeah. some dark times. Like, I was even saying, like, Jimmy was like, when's the next time... Um, you're going to win a World Cup. And I was like, listen, before we could think about that, we have to have a decent World Cup. I mean, 2010 was a disaster. 2014 was even worse. And 2018 <laughs> is even worse. We, we, didn't, we didn't even get there. So before you could get there, piano, piano, si va lontano. You know, yeah. you've got to slowly but surely, you have to Honestly, get there. Honestly, I, I think we definitely have a chance to make some noise in the Euro Cup. I don't think we'll win it, but, you know, Three Final Four. four. Definitely. I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll be pr- very proud of the team if they make it that far. I, I would like to win it, but... This, this is know? a tournament that we need for experience. For our guys yeah. to be like, in a competitive match, this is how we play. You take those qualities and you turn it over to a World Cup. So I feel like we're a little bit stopgate. Like recently, like it was very like right now, right now, right now, where we're doing everything to, to win, but we weren't necessarily, necessarily building for the upcoming mm-hmm. World Cup. Right. And where Conte was a coach of the Euros... And then he's gone by the time of the World Cup, and we throw this guy Ventura in, who we don't have to pay any money, so that's why he goes there. Yeah. Mm. So we have to, if we keep Mancini, you know, we got to build everything around Mancini. Which yeah. He's doing a great job, though. You Shout out give, to Mancini. Exactly. I agree with you. He, I he changed like, the whole mentality. Do you think he'll sure. still stick around by the time we jump to the... Absolutely. To, yeah. to the Euro, definitely. To the World Cup, you think he'll still stick around? He has to. I think yeah. he's, he's a, lo- he's he's a long-term as long as, as long as long-term, long-term, long-term. Yeah, That's the better one I was going to say. Is it he a more long-term manager for this club or, or for this nation? I, I think that when, when they were talking about who was going to be, my one thing was I want a long-term coach. I don't want someone who's going to be here for the Euros and then not for the World Cup. Yeah. I think it's very important that we stay and shake consistent. things up so much and then you just take it away. You, you know, know what's like a, you know what's a good thing about Mancini though? He says him and Luigi Di, Di Biagio, who's the U21 coach, yeah. he said we're working very closely together and I noticed the U21 plays a 4-3-3. So I feel like finally, you know how like these youth systems, they really they built from kids since the U8s, the U9s mm-hmm. in Spain, they're playing 4-3-3 mm-hmm. so that as they go up to the national team. They're used to it. Like Barcelona. Yeah, Germany That's what that they too. do. So yeah. that's a, you have to have that. And I think Mancini's doing that really well by implementing it. We mm-hmm. have to believe in our philosophy, right? Whether it's right or whether it's wrong, we at least believe in it and see it out, which is important. They're doing from the top to the bottom, basically. So we're not, yes. we're not relying on a coach. We're relying on a system. Mm-hmm. Exactly. See, that's a, the that's a point I had in my head to ask you guys questions throughout, but you're literally answering it as we're speaking. I want to ask you guys how these top nations like Germany, Spain, Brazil... Uh, France always stay at the top. At, right? the, end, no. at the end of the but day, the they all had to come. Too. At the end of the day, they all had to come through a system. Yeah. So I think that that it's the systems that they're putting into place. Like there's there's a thing of when Germany didn't qualify for a World Cup that I know a lot of people sent me after Italy went out. Whereas I didn't read the book yet. 
Um, but it was how they built after they screwed up in their World Cup, and it started from the youth level. So I think that to answer your question as best as you can, look what happened with Netherlands. You know, Netherlands was one of the best until yeah. recently. They haven't looked good. You know, they mm-hmm. they since 2010 World they're Cup they're getting back. They fell off no, a now, lot. now they are. You know, they have some good young kids. And, but before that, they yeah, were similar to where we were. They didn't qualify for the World Cup. Mm-hmm. And to think Netherlands and Italy don't qualify for a World Cup, it's unthinkable. I don't know if it ever happened before that, that both of them were not inside yeah. of a World Cup. And a lot of questions that I know a lot of people I know always ask me are that Europe has the unfair advantage, well, has a severe disadvantage in terms of qualifying for the World Cup because there's so much or so many European nations. That could be a whole topic we get into another time. Yeah. But that's just always been one of those things that, just lay in the back of my head how there's so many European nations as opposed to uh, the other nations in Asia, per se. When, when even South America, though, because they have like a different system. There's like a league where the top seven qualify. There's no groups there. You remember Argentina, yeah. they were almost out. They were nearly yeah, out. They went to the less. playoffs. If, if right? they were inside of a group like Europe's, they probably wouldn't have made it. Right. You know, because they were doing so poorly. I remember the, it went to like the last game against Paraguay, I want to say. Or there's like the top eight qualified for the top whole, eight. And they, yeah, yeah. they just made it yeah, in. Yeah. Like they screwed up so many games over here in, in Europe. Like we had Spain in our group. So you, you lose one game. You're already going to the qualifying to the knockout match, you know, against where you play against Sweden. Yeah. So definitely is it a factor. But again, if you're Italy and if you're these top cl- top nations, you got to you can't look at it as an excuse. Inexcusable. You yeah. got to get it like there. Um, anything else with the national team? I think, think for the most part, uh, I don't want people to, to take this that we're having these high aspirations and we expect this every time. Like that's not what we expect. A six goal win, you know. It we expect, nice, we hope for it, but it's refreshing let, to see though. Yes. after so so many years. It's just you got to give we it should, this we one. Should, we should have beat Finland three zero four zero though too. I was thinking that too. We should have won like eight zero today. If anything, yeah. if we want to like pinpoint, <laughs> you know what I mean. Well, <laughs> one thing that we didn't talk about goal scorers is that up until Quietella's second goal. There's been 18 different goal scorers for Italy's yeah. last 18 goals. We were talking about that on the way here. Which is good, and, like, but you also got bad. On that It's kind of strange because the they don't right have a, like, a real striker. Like, Gabbiadini. Yeah, Gabbiadini. What happened to him? Dude. He's not even on the team, right? I don't know if he's injured. Can you, can you read off the names? I'm actually curious. Yeah, Gabbiadini. Uh, we got Rocco's best friend, Immobile. <laughs> Chiellini, Candreva, Insigne, Balotelli, Belotti. Bonucci, Zaza, Giorgino, Bernadeschi, Biraghi, Politano, Barella, Keen, and then uh, Sensi, and then Quarella. Right? Yep. Yeah. Wow. Quarella broke that when yeah, he yeah, scored he two goals. two in a row, right? <sighs> so, or wait, what about, didn't Verratti score? Yeah, that I think that was after that. That was after that. Yeah. And then Pavoletti, too. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, but anyway, uh, diversified scoring, right? It's there. good that we're diversified, There's but it, and cons I also think it shows yes, that we don't yes. have a number nine. That, Wait, that who's can... who's Italy's best player right now, though? For what striker? No, in general, like Verratti. Verratti uh, was a no. killer this, this. Wait, wait, week. wait. Do you mean club football too? No, I mean for the national, the national, like the I, last two Chiellini games. Pro- oh, oh, last two games. Keen, I, I, think, in general. I think Keane and Verratti were the two standouts. Probably Keane. Probably Keane more. I, yeah. I thought Verratti. I'm with Mike. You're with Keane. Yeah. What did you think? I think Verratti. I thought Verratti was really good. I thought yeah. Verratti was really It's stuff you don't see in, you know. Dude, Verratti's been there forever. Bro, you Verratti, expect that stuff from Verratti's him. Verratti's like and he's three been steps. Hurt and he did nothing for no. La Nacional. Yo, you know, he hasn't. How much did we criticize Verratti after Italy went out of yeah, Sweden 100%. that he wasn't a leader? Yeah. This guy's like three right. steps ahead of everybody. Yeah. He makes a pass, and sometimes you think it's his fault that the pass didn't go, but it's because Bernadeschi or Politano didn't read the pass is the real reason. You yeah. know, his mind is so smart, so... I like him. I like him a lot. I think that to I give think him credit. Skill wise, like no, he's very technical. He reminds me a lot of Pirlo. Me too. But his skill is better if it like like Pirlo was just like a master, but like he's like more gifted. Yeah. He he does a lot more tricks and he's he can maneuver out yeah. of his way a little bit. Pirlo is a little bit more simple, but Pirlo And he fouls a lot too and gets yellow cards. <laughs> Yo, that's no, he a fouls problem every with other game. Yeah. He acts so he stupid. Gets yellow card. He gets fr- the frustration he's fouls. He's always on the he's always on the floor, I noticed, fighting for the ball. Like, yeah. You see yeah. him like yeah. reaching that, yeah. yeah, it's, it's just, stupid it's, at times. Yeah, it's stupid. He's gotta mature a little bit. Maybe he's gotta leave PSG and uh, <laughs> come back to come to City. Not even come back. He I would never love even played to see him back in City. Yeah. yeah. You guys would be Yeah, Inter would love to that that is the team for him. Wow, that'd be amazing. That's the team for him. Going to the Inter and bring him in He's I like a rock star for <laughs> PSG <laughs> though. I would love to play with PSG too. Yeah. yeah. You know? Come on. Yeah, but, but, but Inter league, at the end of the day, I would say this is a bold statement. I think that Inter will win a Champions League before PSG win a Champions League. 
Ooh. Yeah, you gotta you gotta mark this point in the podcast. Mark it, mark Save it, it for the years to come. Either somebody's gonna call me crazy and PSG <laughs> ends up winning it next year, That's or Inter's. I, I just feel like Inter's got that DNA. History like really matters. I believe in history. 100%. I yeah. believe history really matters. Mm-hmm. And Inter right now we gotta open up the the checkbook. You know, we gotta <laughs> spend some money. Bro, That's true. What do you think about? Let, let's transition. Yeah, let's go to Serie A. Serie A. What do you think about the Icardi situation? I think I think it's time he plays, man. It's time for him to play with with Lautaro. <laughs> Do you take anything yeah, away from him, or you're like, what I mean, love bygones a, be bygones, and that's a, he has to play to get the value up anyway. That's true. You know, so if we're gonna yeah. sell him, like, let Might the guy well back. Yeah, that's I right. think that's what everybody's thinking right now. It's like the thing is, he doesn't want to play. They were saying he doesn't want to play without the captain's armband. That's what is, he said. I thought he said he was okay with it. No, nah, they were saying that he didn't want to come because of the captain's armband. This is I mean, diva, diva stuff, man. I think that there's no room for this in football. Yeah. Yo, a real captain, you don't need the captain's armband. Yeah. You don't need it. And you, you show it on the field, you know? So, mm-hmm. I think that your team is good. You're still missing a few pieces. You got to figure out this situation with the What about man? Beast. He's a, yeah. Yo, that Piontek. game against Milan, bro. Yo, Piontek I was, was like, wow. You were Piontek there. Piontek was lost. Yeah, so, you know, I was, How was, I was it there. Derby? It was amazing. So, last year, I went to Roma Lazio. Nice. I'm going to say Roma Lazio was a little crazier, though. Believe Those it or fans, not. The fans. Because yeah. they, I mean... I think it's also because like they sold less tickets to Inter fans. Mm. Like Inter just had that small section up top. Mm. But Roma Lazio was definitely a little crazier. Yeah. But my favorite part about that whole game is when we were leaving, Inter fans were doing this. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> <laughs> I was oh, cracking man. up. Yeah, oh, they were man. making fun of them. And you met up with Peter too. Peter yeah. was over there. Peter was Me little- and Peter were actually messaging each other like, let's meet up, whatever, whatever. And then like as I'm going on a train, I see... This kid Alessio that I went to college with at St. Oh, Francis, okay. and then I saw Peter right next That's to him. Like, oh, wow. Okay, yeah, it's they're all together. World. Bro, I didn't believe you guys. Awesome. Peter texted us. He said, "I randomly ran into Sabino." And I was and like, I, "Yeah, right." I was like, "Yo, you have his number." You, you guys sent a video, and I was like, "Oh, you're kidding!" Like, yeah. I thought it was just a joke for the camera, but you guys literally ran into yeah. each other. Okay. And we ran in before Cito. that video. Like, really? we were like next to each other on the whole train ride there, wow. and it was like packed. It was hot. That's you nice. know, people were pushing That's me. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I've never Sounds been. Sounds fun. I never been to the derby. I never been to. I really awesome. want to go to the next is Juve Milan. That's where you want to go to. Yeah, that's a good Juve one. Juve Inter. Juve Inter. Okay. Juve Inter. That's we'll derby go next Dalia, year. Yeah, right there. I got the how plug was the, how in was the Milan. How was the stadium? Seats are small, man. Small. I meant awesome the, stadium. I meant like the atmosphere. Like, atmosphere was it just crazy. ruthless? It's good. Cause it was nice that Milan came back into the match. Cause yeah. for us, it was nice. Yeah. For you, you were probably scared. I was like, yeah, I was like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. to the last second, right? <laughs> but um, it's it's pretty understandable, you know. Um, I, I thought that Milan was gonna have the upper hand. To be honest, like it's weird. It's weird. I thought Milan was gonna win too. And me I'm, too. You know, that's Peter. Peter's. They the were just on fire, though. you know. Yeah, they were doing really well. But Inter somehow that that game. Was like, Derby's a different match. Exactly. It's a different exactly. match. Exactly. That's what we were saying too. We we're like, we predicted, I predicted a tie, but I was leaning towards a Milan win. But in a, a Derby, form not goes out of the window, but it kind of does. You know, there's just so much passion and bragging rights mm-hmm. on the line. The whole city's in stake, you know? Oh, for sure. As in terms of general, the third, first place, I mean, I think we could agree it's, it's Juve. Yeah. Juve got yeah. Studetto. Um, Napoli, we'll, we'll, Napoli's ahead how many points now? I think, I think it's, it's 15. 15. Yeah, it's 15. 15? No, they're not ahead 15. They're below 15 points. No, no, yeah. he meant second, no. He meant second Se- or third. Yeah, second or third. Oh, is okay. it's six, six, seven. Se- seven. Seven? Okay. Honestly, I think Napoli's like, I mean, they're very shaky. Like, I don't get it. Like, just when they're like about to take a step forward, they just like, I can't explain. Like, one step forward, two steps back yeah, at like, this point. Like, two steps forward, one and a half step back. Oh, okay, okay. I see. You know? Mm. So what what do we think about the third and fourth place are really where it gets is heated. Milan yeah. is Inter and, and Milan. Like How do you think it fun. finishes though? I'm gonna say Inter and then Milan. <laughs> no bias. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> zero. That's strictly bias. Yeah. But Inter's only uh, two will, points up. On so, it. Yeah, it's that terrible. that derby meant a lot. That's yeah, when we took sure. third place. Exactly. Back. Exactly. Then, what do you think, Rocco? No, I'm thinking Milan comes around and takes this one. I just so I Milan has just, a really nice core, man. They, they have a this nice side of the core. table. We, we keep agreeing on the same thing. <laughs> it's the Juventino mentality. Yeah, you guys yeah. Are Juventino, of course, <laughs> you know? I do think Inter's gonna stay there because uh, Inter's yeah. been at. Well, dude, especially if Cardi comes back. Yeah. That's true. Inter's, oh, Inter's had such true. a rocky uh, past few games, and they're still up by two points. And Milan's had a phenomenal. That's true. So now, if they level out, I think Inter's just gonna edge them. That's a good point. I don't know how much. Antonio yeah. was saying at one point that he wanted to get second place. This guy thought Milan was gonna get second place. 
Honestly, yeah. Milan has a really nice team, man. Like, I'm an Inter fan, like I said, but I like Milan. Like, they have like, nice young kids. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Their defense, defense is insane. Yeah, their defense is good. Like, their defense is, they, Romagnoli's Italy's future, man. No, Romagnoli's sure. the best Italian youngster that we have. And I want to see... The only thing... I don't like Rodriguez. I'm not a fan. Yeah. Of, I want to see that. Calabria and Conti, both as the fullbacks. And I think that their center back, Musacchio or Zapata... What's up with Cutrone, else? man? Is he done? There's a lot of rumors. Uh, his agent actually came out and said, we're going to see what happens at the end of the season. Inzaghi uh, said today he wants to see them play together. Yeah, said, I, I, see I don't see why not. But yeah. listen, if they make the Champions League, Cutrone's going to have they gonna can't, more they playing They can't play time. together in a 4-3-3, though. He's mm-hmm. got to sacrifice yeah, Suso or Chanolulu. They're going to uh, change a formation for sure. Yo, he's nasty. Suso? Chanolulu? Chanolulu. Like <laughs> <that. laughs> None of us can say his name. <laughs> All right. Mike. So, Mike knows he, how to He was wearing number 10. Hakan, that, Hakan. We'll yeah, say Hakan. Yeah. Yo, Chahan nasty, Olu. bro. I'm not a like, the whole game, fan. I kept saying, like, yo, this kid's nasty. You and like I was him? with my friend that's, uh, he's Italian but lives in Germany. And he's like, he's German, but he's Turkish or yeah. something. Like, yeah, yeah. One of those situations. Yeah. But, yo, he was just serving up dimes. Like, he was the best player that match besides Skriniar. Paqueta was doing really good until he came yeah, off. He came I, I like, I like, I think Paqueta's been doing well. But I do agree with you guys. I think that... Maybe Rino Catuso has done it much better than I expected. Yeah, he's awesome. Man. To be honest with Dude, you, I would have sacked him like twelve months ago, but he's proving me wrong at least. <laughs> but I do. <laughs> it's yeah. I it's think amazing that, how it works. Yeah, right? it's a football. He has a way. passion, man. You know. Uh, he is. Yeah, Speaking yeah. of that, I got a question. Too much. Too Barbara, much. <laughs> real quick, I think that Gattuso maybe needs to be a little bit more flexible in the way that we see things. You know, maybe Suso. You know, right like this. With well, both they just played together, Pytek and uh, Piontek and, um, and, and Kudrone. Yeah, yeah, with maybe Suso behind them. Yeah, I could see that. Mm. So they got to figure things out. What do you think about Spalletti, by the way? Yeah, I'm not a fan of him. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect Antonio replacement. Antonio hates him. I'm going to share it too. I don't like him. You don't like him? Nah. Uh, nah. Would you go for Conte next? Who, who uh, do you yeah, want? I would say Conte. No, but who do you but want? Who do you want? Who's realistic too? I mean, I don't know. Simeone? I he's mean, not, I don't think he's, he's not going. Like no, he's not going. I know. He's he looks good in Spain, man. He's had a new car. Oh, yeah. He looks good in Milan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's true, yeah. too. Bro, imagine you still him. You still Griezmann. Take a few players in that. No, they, with Godin. They put Godin, Griezmann, and uh, and Bring in Messi, too, yo. That's the dream. Yeah. That's the dream. <laughs> um, no, but that's interesting. A lot of people say Pep. Guardiola? Yeah. For Inter? Nah. Nah, you don't think so? I don't think so. I think after Man City, like... If he doesn't win Man City this year, he's going to make what a move. What if he stays? You don't think he'll stay? doesn't win what, though? The yeah. league or the Champions League? Champions League. Depends how far they go. Yeah, it does If it's depend. a shit show, then I mean, they team, might leave. The team but... there is sick, though. Yeah, Who, yeah, sick. Yeah, Who's the favorite for the Champions League right now? Barca. Juve. I, think I think Barca's favorite. It's Barca and Juve, I think. Barca uh, I think ahead. those two are the favorites. I think, maybe, maybe Barca. Ahead. But Barca's been winning for how long? They've they've That's won true. it more recently. But I think both of them are definitely up there. I think I think Juve is the favorite. You Man think said he would be second step? I think. You think the world's on Juve's side here or Barca's side? The world yeah. is on Juve's I think, side. I think the world wants to see them two in the final. You yeah. want to see Messi and Ronaldo? Because when's the oh, next yeah, time? Clash. After this, when when are we ever going to see Messi is versus that, Ronaldo? Is that how it works out, yeah, though? Yeah, that's yeah. exactly how it works out. Yeah, I would like so to see that. Barca have to play Man U, and then in that same leg, it's Liverpool-Porto. So Before we get into that, is is uh, Ronaldo good? They said this he needs like series. a week, one to two weeks. So ho- hopefully he'll make it by the first leg of uh That guy's IX. made like a machine. I'm not too nervous. I'm not too nervous. He's, telling, he's a freak of nature, man. Yeah, he is. I don't I mean, care what his, you say his about age. Crazy. Just, I don't know if Guayadella is like that either. Sorry to cut you off, but no, no, they, no. they age like fine wine, man. This yeah, is crazy. something special. Well, this guy, quite, I mean, Guayadella's. You can't compare yeah, Ronaldo. Yeah, Ronaldo, Ronaldo's like. Ronaldo's an athlete. He's a. That guy's. The stuff that he does, his workout ethic is crazy. He hasn't had a muscle injury since 2015. This is his first time since 2015. That doesn't happen when you're 34 years old. Yeah. They study. So like, the body starts breaking down a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, seriously. Anyway, but yeah, I, yeah, I'm not too worried, but he said one to two weeks. So. so this is a good question. If it's Messi and Ronaldo in the final, is the winner the GOAT? Because a lot of people a lot of people always say, like, who's, who's the GOAT? That's At this point question. in their career? The thing is, is it, all right, so if I don't it's know. like that, Yo, is it's the Ronaldo. winner that game the goal? Yo, it's Ronaldo. What's, what, if, if, even yeah. if he loses that game? No, no. If Ronaldo wins, he has to be. What about if Messi wins? You still say no? You know why? Because he's won in Spain. He's he'll win. every league. He won in Italy. In every league. He won in England. In, in England. Yo, Messi, I love... Messi, to me, Messi's the most skilled player I've ever seen in my life. Mm-hmm. I can't talk most about talented. Pelé. Skill I can't talk wise, about Maradona. Yeah. I didn't watch yeah. him. 
Pe- what Messi does, he was born with a football at his at his foot. Mm-hmm. Ronaldo was more trained. He worked his ass off to get to yeah. that level, and he's more complete. Like he can do everything, headers, and he more so he's more of a leader. Mm-hmm. I think that Ronaldo, when your team is down, this guy motivates. He's like, guys, we gotta go. Messi, he's he's more quiet. You know, Messi doesn't impress me what he does for Argentina either. I mean, he went to the finals that time, but a other few than, times. Well, by America, you're saying? Well, well, no, the World Cup final. Oh, I'm World talking Cup. about. Okay. But he lost that game, and then Germany, he lost right? in the Copa America game. I was at that two game. two times the Copa America, right? Wow. Two yeah, times, right? Twice. Twice. So, right? Wasn't it twice? So, like in the Chile, big stage, I like I don't know what it is. Like, especially for yeah. Argentina, he like. Maybe nah. it's a mental block or something, or maybe there's a lot of pressure. I, I respect Ronaldo a lot just because, yeah, I've obviously, I've always, I was never like a huge fan of Ronaldo, but I always respected him, you know, because, <laughs> what? I, I just want to bring up a point. I agree with you, but I remember when Ronaldo scored the bicycle kick against you. Oh, my God. You're, you're, yeah. Marco was like, dude, I hate this guy so much. Yeah, I hate I his guts, but he's yeah. a winner. On our yeah. side, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, no, but he's always, you wait, Marco was like punching uh, holes wait, in wait, wall wait, this one. <laughs> but, but that last part yeah, is exactly, but like, but I, a, I still respected him. <laughs> yeah. If You can't say that I love my competitors. As a competitor, you have to eat air. I hate you when we play against each other in Calcetto. Yo. Yeah. That's how it is. Oh, so on Growing Up Italian podcast episode. I know what he's gonna say. Episode right? four. <laughs> I said I like Ronaldo. This was before he came to you. Oh. They oh, both said they didn't like him. Yeah. So go back to our podcast. <laughs> and like your fans like <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Bro, I'm admitting though. I'm admitting. No, I, I, I like. I, I hated that. Said anything, yeah. I, I hated. No, I, I hated him. I hate because he would always. I never thought. Juve. I never thought he would come to you. Man. No, me I never. Me neither. But yeah. once a summer when they it were linking, it happened very fast. I thought very fast. It makes sense. It makes sense. But anyway, um, who's the goal? I think I respect Ronaldo a lot for being able, if he does win in each league, I think that that. But if Messi wins it, what's account for him, though? If, what just would another that thing on his Bro, legacy. Just another, just Yo, thing? I, I, the thing that I hate <laughs> I the most, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I hate when everybody goes and they're like, Ronaldo's go no Messi is yo enjoy them both enjoy both yeah yeah, yeah. let's respect just enjoy the ride respect both they're both we're so lucky to have grown up right now where we get to watch both how long have we been watching them since I was a kid yeah. since as long as I can remember it's always been why are we ever been. gonna see them again that's the thing that's the two guys like him it's two guys just yeah. like him in the future another hundred years probably who's, who's the closest yeah. who do you think is the closest to them youngster coming up or, probably, or just third who right. do you think's third what I like Mbappe yeah I like Mbappe too yeah. Yeah. I feel like I wouldn't say Neymar. I'm not Neymar. No, nah, I'm not Neymar I, guy. Uh, when you say right. like that, I think Mbappe real Me like too. right away. Salah. Salah. Class. You think Salah? Yeah. Salah is good. How old is Salah? Is he 27? Oh, he's older. Yeah. He's older. Yeah. But Salah is very good. I think I think Mbappe is the only one I see right now who's got the talent to be able to dominate the way Ronaldo and Messi did. Yeah. yeah. If, he's just taking games too. over already. Neymar Neymar. Dude, he won the World Cup already. Yeah. Name his team. That's insane. <laughs> Neymar, I, I mean, know. he was on a sick team. Though. Yeah, yeah. I know, but true. it's not He's like not he was like, on the bench he was or like, something. Yeah, he, was yeah, yeah. he was a starter. He was scoring. He was. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I get, yeah. I get it. I get it. Neymar is like twenty-seven, right? I think twenty-seven or twenty-eight. Look it up. My computer's about to die, but look it up real quick. Because Neymar at this yeah, at this age, so. yo Ronaldo and Messi were dominating the world. Yeah. They mm-hmm. were everywhere. Neymar does not dominate like that, yeah. so they're different. He's also a flop too, man. Come on, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he dies. It's so crazy, much. yeah. I know that's a turn off for sure. Yo, it's so funny. I don't think we we never spoke this much about non-Italian. Uh, football. <laughs> Sorry, but they were like growing up Italians, and, and we're speaking Maybe about. We'll it. talk about the Greece game. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I, I like it. I like it. One one thing. What do you guys think about some of the smaller teams in Italy right now? Like we got um, Atalanta, Torino, and Sampdoria all pushing for that Europa League spot. I'm a big Atalanta fan. I, I like the push that they're making. I love their youngsters. Uh, they 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 have a promising future. Uh, I feel like they're always going to be one of those teams that. Sneak their way up a little bit, but not too much. You know what I mean? Yeah. So maybe the top, the most they'll go is five. Europa League. Uh, yeah, European yeah. Like Europe will be big. You know? Yeah. So not too many high hopes for them, but I feel like they can compete in terms of Serie A. And they sell top notch teams. Guys, They're such yeah. a model, too, because they use all their youth. Everything, for yeah. the most part, everything's local and they do it so well. What do you so. think? Where's, where's Tori- Torino's all the way at the Torino's, Torino's, Torino's in eighth place, Sampdoria's in ninth, and Atalanta's in seventh. But they're all super close on points. Yeah, I would like to see Fiorentina there because I love Chiesa, man. I'm a big Chiesa. Yeah, Fiorentina, Fiorentina, nah. You don't nah. think so? You no, think they, no, I don't think that they have it this year, no. no. They're going to get Di Francesco probably next year. They're going to get rid of Pioli. Yeah. But they, Pioli's gone. They, they have a good squad. I think nah. uh, Pioli's a they're little too underperforming, and, and, too. And they're not, they're not gelling I like how they should be. I think Fiorentina should be higher, should be doing better. For but, sure. again, that seven, well, that... Six through like ten is super competitive. Super yeah. Just to yeah. be fair, even Sampdoria, yeah, I mean, man, I love five them. Five points separates everybody. Right there. Yeah. 
Yeah, pretty much. I just thought of a but, question now since since we got Mike. Start going through whatever yeah. questions we got from the fans. Yeah, yeah. let's do it. Um, but I want to ask you because we posted this today. It was about if Icardi leaves Inter. They're talking about either Jekyll. I'll take Dybala, bro. No, no, no. Give me Dybala. <laughs> I'll negotiate with Dybala that'll, that'll in a few be, minutes. That'll be, that'll be a, a good trade, though. Cars yeah, okay. Yo, first things first. First well, things you first. Well, you think Dybala's Dybala's good, untouchable bro. for me. Bro, throw Skriniar He doesn't even play for you Yo, guys. Throw Skriniar in there and we can talk about it. So then we're not talking. Yeah. Young town. I'm fine over here. What'd you do with Skriniar in there? Yeah, give us Kalini. I mean, yeah, no, 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 no. D'Ambrosio will give you yeah, that. Yeah, D'Ambrosio. Get the fuck out of here. Um, what, do we gotta, what was I going to say? Okay, Icardi. They're saying possible the replacement, Jekyll or Zapata. What do you feel about that? Jekyll. Jekyll? Yeah, I'll take it. Opposite. I like Atalanta, so it's got to be uh, Zapata. I think, yeah, Zapata. Do you like any of them? Do you like? Do you think they're... Either of them are. I think Akari is definitely better than both of them. Yeah, yeah obviously. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> that's like saying, yeah, Let's you not can't, mess around you can't eat steak tonight. Here's like your microwave. Salad. Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, like it's, it's hard to say, you know. Uh, Icardi we'll lo- loves Milan, man. I mean, I hope I hope we could work it out. It's because he's a point. very important piece to our team. But he needs to man up and tell his wife to relax. Oh, <laughs> damn. It's about that time, Wanda. Man. What's the, the, yeah, agent Wanda. Yeah, Wanda. the agent, the <laughs> agent slash wife role. Yeah, it's not cool, man. Come mm, on. It's not working. There's no room for that in football. Yeah, it's it's getting to the point that, especially with the way that they handle everything's public. And, yeah. Like, you know, shit's got to stay inside the locker room. Locker room is a sacred place, no you know? Yep. Um, but yeah, what, what, are the, what questions we got, Mike? Uh, we got a bunch. I'll, I'll read this one for Maria. Uh, she she said, "How do you guys think Italy would do against a harder opponent in the group like uh, Greece or Bosnia?" Well, mm. before this podcast, I said uh, I want to smoke everybody in the group. <laughs> yeah. Like we won As he two stares zero. At Michael. <laughs> <laughs> like I think Greece is better than only, Bosnia only because I know Mano last night. But <laughs> yeah, Bosnia is Bosnia is good too. Bosnia is very good. I think Greece is gonna play Italy harder just because. Greece, Greece kind of plays goals. how like Italy used to play, or yeah. do you generally played with the counterattack. Like even against Bosnia, we had the game on on top. Bosnia was completely controlling the game; they're up two zero, but then they threw it away. And Greece was able to hit them on the counterattacks. And then mm-hmm. once they got to nine to ten men, Bosnia, Greece was just pounding on the yep. attack, yeah. and they were able to get a tie and even almost win. So I think that Greece is one of those teams that they're going to stick in there. Uh, Bosnia, on the other hand, they think that they have more quality, which is dangerous. But Bosnia also like to play. Which could be in Italy's favor, where they'll overextend themselves, yep. and then we'll be able to attack. Yep. So Greece, Greece, I think is going to be a gritty kind of match, which yeah. is difficult. So it, uh, Greece is more of a chess match for Italy. You know, they have to play their cards right and make sure that they. Greece loves that counter attack. Every time I watch Greek, it's focused. Uh, the counter attack is a pitiful point for them. Bosnia, they're more like a foot on the throttle. You know, they just want to go, 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 go. But when you get tired out, when Things start not going your way. It's going to be hard to rebound from that. They you, try to play good football. They yeah, do. they do. There's well, no doubt they have heart and passion, but you got to at a certain point you got to take a step back, take your foot off the gas. Also, Italy, Italy needs to make a statement and win by two goals though, both games. No, I'm with you that I don't think that we could play these games of mm. oh let's just go for a tie because nah. once you start going for that, that's where you get losses. Sick and, of it, man. I'm sick of seeing that. Me too. And I think like even Ventura was saying like when we played against Spain, like it was like, come on, it's Spain. We didn't think we were going to win. It's like, what a loser mentality because even Conte, when we went against Belgium and when we went against Spain in the Euros, we weren't better than them. We just had more heart and we played yeah. smarter yeah. and we nearly did it against Germany. We went to freaking penalty kicks with Germany who were the champions of the yeah. world. They, with Giacchini and Pelé. With Giacchini, Pelé and Ede. <laughs> I yeah. mean, so there's no excuse. Ed there, man. Wow. Giacchini had a sick run that year. He did. No, he did. did. I yeah. love Giacchini. I love Giacchini. Yeah. 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 What's his Yo, nickname? Giacchini. 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 This guy's all over the place. Yeah. I see him over yeah. on one side of the field and the other side of the field. He doesn't even play true position. He's yeah. just all over. Yeah. You know why he's called Giacchini? Why? Conte, one day, he gave him the nickname Giacchini. And um, he said that if this guy was Brazilian, everybody would talk about him. So, so they changed the name. He, is he even uh, playing anymore? Nah, uh, he's at Kiev. He's right? at Kiev. Yeah, yeah, he plays. He, he needs. There. He needs Conte as his coach, man. Yeah. That guy was only good when Conte was yeah, his coach. He went to Napoli. Same thing with a bunch of those guys. He, he followed Conte too to to Chelsea, right? No, no. Giacchini didn't. No, go to he went to Napoli. He went, he went, to, went to Southampton, didn't he? Who are you talking about? Giacchini. Napoli, I just said after Not, the Euros. Oh, he did, did he? go to Southampton. Yeah. I oh, that's to he went to England. I know he went to. England. I think he went to England. Did he go to England. Check if he went I'm to pretty England. sure he went to Napoli. You got it? Yeah, yeah check it. it. No, he did go to Napoli, but right I think after he was that run, he got, he got. I felt like he went to England. 
Let me let me throw a question in yeah, from Roberto on our Instagram because we posted a story too. Uh, he says, "Who's Italy's best striker right now?" I know we touched base on that a little bit, but Based on right, at this, games, moment, right, right at, at this, this moment, right at this moment, right at this moment. Tell me, he's crazy. He, how many goals did he score in France? This year? like he's oh. killing it right now. Oh, I'll tell you, guys, on fire. I'm gonna break this up. Sorry, Sunderland actually. Sunderland, yeah, but Sunderland. Then he went to Napoli. Yeah, I remember ah, those okay. In okay. Yeah. So I didn't remember. Yeah, so who's Italy's best pure striker right now? Keen Not even really on the national team, striker. just I, in general. I mean, based on these two matches, you gotta, you can't say anything other than Keen. Or, I mean, Qualia. Yeah, Qualia. That was I guess the other guy I was going to go to. You say Balo? If you're saying He's pure striker, right? I mean, Balo, Balo's having a sick year, man. I'm disappointed how Mancini didn't call him off, but uh, I think I think he's time. I think he's doing it on yeah, purpose, I think so man. Too. Yeah. I think so too. You're gonna see Balotelli on a team or so. together, maybe. We'll you guys see. got any more questions? Uh, yeah. yeah I'll, I'll tell you another one too. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Go. Yeah. All right. Uh, this is from Michael. He said, "Out of the bottom four teams in Serie A, which one do you like the most?" Bottom. Okay. Four, if you could three, pull up the it's Chievo, Verona, Frosinone, Bologna, and Empoli right now. I like Bologna the best. Bologna. Yeah. Because they have a Canadian owner he's italian canadian i always thought bologna they're trying to build it they are building a stadium mm -hmm. so i'd kind of like for a team that's building a stadium to stay in okay that's kind of my uh, i was gonna say empoli but they don't play their greek center back that they have so I'm going <laughs> bologna <too. laughs> this bologna's guy? good they had total cities there too but bologna's but probably been project. one of the worst teams but mihailovic been... coming and he's been they've been doing better and uh he's only a point away uh Outside of, uh, to stay in the Serie A, so. What do you think? Uh, yours? I'm just gonna jump shit with you guys. I don't have Bologna. much. I don't know. I'm, much I'm the about typical those Serie A where I focus on the top to mid, yeah. and I, I know a lot of people on your channel and your page. They want more coverage on the bottom tier yeah, teams, yeah, yeah. so I do respect uh, that person for. Yo, sending shout that out one to in. ESPN Plus though. I do have a subscription <laughs> a subscription for five dollars a month. Yeah, it's not bad. So you could watch Frozinone yeah, sure. versus yeah, Bologna. Yeah, they, they do good in, on coverage for that. I, I watch just, it. No, no, I watch. I, you, watch I know, I know. You guys, obviously, we watch. Watch a lot of the younger, uh, the smaller teams, but some of them are boring. I, even me as a Serie A fan, some <laughs> no, of the games true, are boring. Yeah. Who's, all, but who's, now who's actually, gonna come up in Serie B? If you know, it's we the should way say is. though, um, the, the now the lower teams are the hardest teams to play. Right now, the lower teams are, are the hardest teams to play. <laughs> These are all making calculations. Yo, if we get a draw here, if we get yeah. a win here, we're staying. Look like at Genoa, yeah, how they yeah, just beat on. Juventus. Yeah, exactly. Not too long ago. Pointing, yeah. pointing I was case. just in Brescia, too. I would like to see Brescia come on. Dude, Brescia got they, Tonali. They, they got Tonali there. We need Palermo, Palermo. I need Palermo fighting. back up. They're a point, yeah. they're a point Palermo away. Palermo has the hottest kit in Serie A. Oh, yeah, yeah, I like it. Yo, Their kids are those. sick. The is to see La Salernitana, Salerno. Oh, okay, Salerno. Make it to Serie A. Serie Yo, shout outs to, to my guy, Nick LaVeya. He really uh, watches you guys a lot. Oh, yeah? Awesome. And nice. he's the only person that I know that's a diehard Salerno fan. Ooh. And he always says, like, oh, you're friends with Marco and Mike. Yeah, yeah. I watch all their stuff. Why don't they talk about Salerno anymore? Like, there's nothing to talk about. Bro. We'll Sorry. try to put a final dedicated phone. He can't even watch them play. <laughs> like, if you can't watch them play, how are they? Yo, if he sees an interesting piece of content, send it over. We'll yeah. make something. Yeah, 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 that's true. That's true. We always tell We've people to do that. I, I wish, my ideally, if you ask me in an ideal world, I would take um, Palermo, Venezia, and Empoli this year. But Venezia's not going to go. Yeah, Palermo's always the team that flip-flops yeah. all the time. Yeah, lately, in lately we've only been flopping. <laughs> Palermo. Um, and what, Mike, yeah, uh, what you got? From Piotr, I think this guy's Polish. He has the same first name as Yelinski. Uh He was saying, how far uh, can Italy's team go in the, in the Euros in 2020 and maybe even fight for a medal? We're talking we a little bit about yeah, top, top, top four. Yeah. Top four. Yeah. You think top four all? Top you guys four? Are, no, no, that'd, no, be that's, like, that'd, that's, be that's, yeah. that'd be good. That'd be good. Top not saying four that and every there. team scared to play us. <laughs> okay. We're gonna play a lie detector test. Are you scared to play Italy? <laughs> <laughs> you pass Savino's test. Uh, this one's from Justin. He said Politano or Bernadeschi. Bernadeschi. Yeah, Bernadeschi. Bernadeschi. Yeah, even, you? even you? Wow, I'm surprised. I like. I'm big on Bernadeschi yeah. a lot. Yeah, he's a bowler. Till he went to Juve, he was a monster. Yeah, he doesn't play anymore. Yeah, that's true. He was good in the Atletico game. That was the best game yeah. I've ever seen from him. But you can't yeah. just have one game a season. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He has to improve. Uh, next one from Fat Totti. He said. Uh, who would you... <laughs> Yo, Fat Totti. Yo, shout out questions. to Fat Totti. Yeah, he's, 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 a, he's a big good. fan. He's awesome. Yeah, he's uh, awesome. He said, who would you play at Italy's right back going forward? He said, for me, uh, Florenzi and Piccini aren't good enough. Calabria should be uh, given a chance alongside uh, Lazzari, who should, uh, who's been phenomenal this season for Spal. Piccini was actually pretty good. He was I better than I thought. He wasn't yeah. was was really than used thought. that much, but he was going forward. Yeah, so how can we say that he's that's not good I'm, enough? No, that's what I'm saying. He's I, not I like Conti and Calabria. As Calabria's my, hurt, one. though, like yeah. you said. Well, he, uh, Calabria's with the U21s. Conti's coming back for the oh, really? Con I think Conti's the guy moving me, forward. I, you know? I think... 
Conti. Con- oh, I like Conti for yeah, yo, yeah. he, he uh, attack. He's a beast. His assist, he pinpoints all yeah, the assists for Milan. But it's just too hard great. to tell right now. No, yeah. no, for sure. When they play, I think I, they're tougher. Those bullet. are the guys that I really like. And yo, know, shout out to Spinazzola. Who yeah, freaking man, great he was today. serving Spinazzola. up beautiful yeah, passes today. today. Bro, this kid. That's why I always say, why is Juve trying to get Marcelo? You got a guy like Spinazzola. You got Alexandro and Spinazzola. It's very hard to get two you better. Just gotta play him, like man. That. Spinazzola was great. I like him a lot. He had two assists, right? He, 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 not, yeah, two assists today. He, he could have had four the way today. Was <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Beautiful I don't know passes. Count, but, uh, next one from Anthony. He said, uh, "Would you agree that uh, Fabio has earned uh, his right to be Italy's main striker for the yes. qualification?" Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah, yes. absolutely. Yes, 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 yes. I think even over yes. Keane. Well, Keane, well, he's Keane's playing, playing on the wing. On the wing. He's yeah. playing on the wing, but they could play up top together. Well, but Qualia for sure. Yeah, if you're saying he's a number nine. Even yeah, the rest of the season, he plays bad for Samp. If he's yeah. playing good for us, let him play. Yeah, he's still in there. yeah who cares? Yeah. He's 36 <laughs> still in there. No, no, Fabio. What else? Um, let's see. You another have any questions? Uh, another one from Fat Thought. They actually he said, "Go, uh, going forward." Uh, uh, this is actually the same one as. Uh, let you me. You got one. He's got one. I, All right. Yeah, I want to uh, go. Sabrina says, "I'm a, a big, yeah. I'm a big Cagliari fan. Uh, what do you expect ooh. to see from them going forward?" Their youth just keeps shining through. I think that that's Cagliari's really known for that, and they play good football too. So I think that that Barella. I, I like mean, Pavoletti a lot too. Pa- Pavoletti, yeah. Pavoletti, he's on my uh, ultimate team. So I'll show him love. <laughs> nice. Pavole- uh, Cagliari have some good uh, players. They got Barella, Pavoletti has been Cranio, hitting go- Cranio, goals. Cranio, Cranio. Goal, uh, I like Barella a lot too. The thing is, they're gonna get torn apart this year. I think. You think they're gonna sell yeah. a couple of players? Barella, I think for sure is gonna go. Barella and, but, and Cranio. Uh, I right. can't see that. Cranio needs that hurts to, to see, you know? It does, but if they're going to stay in Italy, it won't hurt that much. Yeah, I'm curious. There's, there's always going to be a, In a do-or-die match, what's Italy's 11? Do-or-die. Okay. Against who, though? Like, let's say... Like, we're about to get knocked like out. Germany, yeah, it. like, it's not... I, I, I can give it off the top of my head. Go ahead. I give it off the top of my head. I'm, I'll be ambitious. Donnarumma, mm-hmm. Conti on the right. Agree. Uh, Romagnoli and Chiellini in the middle. Yeah, that's obvious. Spinazzola on the left. In the midfield... You're um, leaving Bonucci on the bench? Yeah, bench? I'm leaving Bonucci on the bench. Yeah. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Okay. Um, <laughs> v- v- Verratti, Giorginio, and Barella in the middle. And then up top, the guys that we said. Keen, Balotelli, and uh, Chiesa. Keen, Balotelli, and Chiesa. Yeah. And Quaidella, when, whichever way. Either two, Quaidella three. I don't off care. the bench. Quaidella the off the bench. Sub? That, that's my... In Idea. my head, that's my, where my vision goes to where I hope I to like, sit. I would pick Bonucci. Like, you think Bonucci could play... Uh, Oh, on the left, nah, left, yeah, left back. Yeah, I he's more centered, right? Nah. Yo, because our wing, our, our fullback. That's the like problem with Romagnoli. I mean, it was like when Barzai, Kalini, and um, we Bonucci played three, together. But... You know what I mean? Like, yo, you Bonu- gotta play Bonucci. I don't know. Bonucci has not those, a big fan. with those long balls going forward. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. It's so good. Whatever. Either way, wh- whoever's more in front. I like your yeah. team, yeah. but I would add Bonucci. I would take out Jorginho. And for who? That, that's where Sensei. I don't know. I was thinking Zaniolo, but I can't put uh, him there right I can't. Now. I, I can't, can't, can't start. Right I, I just don't like Verratti and Jorginho. They're together. I just feel like they're a prototype of each other. You I know, know what I mean? They got to attack more. One of them got... They, they cancel each other out. Yeah, it's right? like... I think they'll figure it out. I, I'm they're hoping. both very good, though. Right but yeah, Jorginho's having a really tough time, though, too, at Chelsea. That's a good lineup. Everybody He's got to come back to... That's where I am. That's where I'm at. No, definitely. I'll be happy with that. Yeah. What was a really good question that you had? Oh, this one over here no, uh, from John. He said, how will Insigne and Chiesa factor into this Italy attack when they come back? Mm. Uh, who should the top three be? And has Spinazzola three, have done enough to earn the starting spot? We Spinazzola, talked about Spinazzola, yes. Top three, yes. Insigne. And Chiesa. If they were, everyone's I'll speak healthy last on because everybody's going to get mad at me. So. Well, <laughs> I'll speak last. No, say, continue. Okay. You guys go first. Um, I mean, this is tough. The thing is, this is a good problem I have for, for that Zuri because there's just so many attacking, uh, so many options up front, which they never had the past five, six years. So now you're saying so many good players, so many good formations that you yeah, can we play. Have, we have so options. Is, you know? Exactly. Now to say, I mean, uh, Insigne and Chiesa, they're the both great. Right yeah, He's I am, I am going it. around. Because right now, dude, we just saw Italy play fantastic both these games. Okay, bro, so it's so question, hard bro. to go around answer this. The question. I'm, so, I'm sorry, Chiesa on the right, though. He is on the right. I, yeah. I say he has it behind the strikers. Insignia, he's still a class player. I still want to see him. Um, I, I think he has to work his way back in, though. Like he's, You're going to see him come okay. off the bench, Insignia. Okay. I, I could see that, but you know, I love Insignia. It's just I could see him changing the game himself, honestly. He's just one of those guys. He's nifty. He's shifty. He's always somewhere doing something beneficial to the club. 
or okay. nation, wherever he's at. Insignia, he's a game changer to me. I like Insignia, but I, I feel like he's creative, and I think he's probably the most mm -hmm. creative player we have, but I feel like he doesn't step up in the big matches enough. And I hope okay. I'm wrong. I'm, yeah, I'm no, willing to give him, true. I'm not okay. saying to not call him up. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying in the back of my mind, that's where my head is. That's why I didn't put him in. Okay. But I hope very to be wrong. I'm, I'm very, I'll be very happy to be wrong. Uh, let's talk about you guys for a minute. Unless we got any more questions? No, for the most part. The rest the are pretty part. repetitive. Yeah, that's yeah. everything we answer. Yo, so growing up Italians, uh, like I said, yo, your, your, your page is it's so relatable for me. And I love what you guys are doing. And I love how you're giving a face and more of a voice to uh, Italians. And mostly, I feel like Italian-Americans or Italian-Canadians. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah you can say that. Yeah. We have some in Australia, too. Oh, Australia. Yeah. You know? Some in abroad. England. More like abroad. Italians yeah. abroad. Um, and I got to say, it's awesome because, you know, there's a lot of cultures that have kind of communities, mm -hmm. but I feel like Italians have always lacked it a little bit. So I, I just want to say good job by you guys. And thank you guys appreciate for, it. Thanks, for, bro. for thank pushing you. it forward. And I'm just saying, yo, you guys are our first guests. Rocco, I've known you since college. Yeah, man. Do you remember how we, how we met? Do you remember? No idea. We had a, <laughs> were you guys we had, like watching? Oh my god, you there? <laughs> we, we had economics class. <laughs> bro, and I remember you were like, yo... You're Marco from IFTV, right? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, he's like, yo, I run Growing Up Italians. And I remember we just, we clicked because we were both trying to Oh, yeah, something. yeah, you're right, you're right, you're and right. And I remember that. And I was like, holy shit. And then Wait, didn't Rock then. tell you to start an Instagram or something? Like, you're just doing YouTube? Mm, maybe. Yeah, you maybe. guys you guys had the YouTube maybe. channel. Yeah, I don't and... think we were doing anything real on Instagram. It might have yeah. just been there, but we were not using yeah. it. Right, we were right. all YouTube. We were like YouTube and Twitter. YouTube. And you guys were huge on, on Instagram. And I was like, wow, they're, they're so, they're, you guys were killing it. And you still are killing it. <laughs> And it's crazy to see your 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 growth. Um, so I think it's awesome. Yeah, but Talk you guys to too at the same time. Thank you. Thank yeah. you thank this you. this is a special trying. episode for us because it's going to be our 52nd episode. So it's technically a year of doing podcasts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. And we're very proud. Like It took us like just 25, 30 episodes just to figure it out, I would say. You know? We still got a lot, a lot to learn too. Us too. You know? You know? That's everyone. It's yeah. just part yeah. of it. You know? As uh, you know, everybody that's listening... It means a lot for people like us when you support and you subscribe, rate, buy our merch because we don't make money doing this. Like, you know, we're wasting our time and we're putting effort into this. And it's awesome when people buy Galcho shirts, growing up Italian shirts, and you know, support what we're doing because it keeps the lights on, so to speak. You know, how'd you guys start your? How'd you guys start growing up Italian? I don't know. Him, really him and know. my sister started. So it was it was back in 2016, like February, and me and my cousin Michaela always spoke to each other, like had these great ideas and we saw how Italian we were and we always wondered how much Italian everybody else was, if they could relate to us. Uh -huh. So we just started pushing memes out there and it, start, it was a hit from the start. And then we just had this mentality of being embraced for the Italian culture and wanting others to embrace it just as much as awesome. us. So we just had this movement and like, yo, we just want to push this culture forward because it's a dying culture that we see in today's world where nobody really cares about the culture as much as they should when it's, you know... Back to our ancestors, and Greeks can relate to this too. A lot of people can relate to this. Yeah. But just seeing what your ancestors did for you to bring us to America and create such a positive lifestyle and all that stuff, it just gives you hope and wants you to push it forward and thank them for what they did. It's the most and motivating be, thing in the world. To be and, proud of that. You in know? pop culture, the biggest like Italian things recently was Sopranos and Jersey Shore. And like Italians like us, yeah. we're the complete opposite yeah. of that. So we just wanted to put like show like shed some light on what we are, what we're about. That's awesome. Authentic. And that's what we're trying to do with the podcast, you know? That's it's awesome. been fifty plus episodes. We've had a bunch of different guests on. And uh, I was talking to somebody that's like really big in this Italian culture and he's like, How do you guys think of episode ideas? And I'm like, Bro, we didn't even like do any episodes like that yet, like any topic episodes. It's been it's strictly just off the top. Guest and you know just having fun with it. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome. I know. Yo, I love your. Is he your uncle? Is the man? Yeah. Oh my yeah. god, yo, that guy's. We gotta get him on another podcast. He's been super busy. Oh, has he? Yeah. But yeah. we gotta get him on another. He's one. like. He's good. Ardu the is your version of Antonio, oh, basically for those listening. There we go. So there we go. imagine them two together, Maron. Oh, my god. Brother, the, wor the, the world will explode. <laughs> where is he? Where is he from in Italy? <laughs> Salerno, same awesome. as us. Oh, yeah. nice. Campania. Okay. Nice. No, if they were from body, they would have been. It would have been <laughs> yeah. too much for the world. I don't know. End. I don't know if you guys like listen. We're we have a big announcement coming soon. I mean, we kind of announced it already. Yeah, but it's out. We got asked to be on a like host Italian Heritage Day. Oh shit. For the Mets, May twelfth. 
Oh shit! Nice. So nice. we're we're gonna yeah, be thanks, selling bro. we're gonna be yeah. selling thanks, tickets bro. and stuff. Nice. We're, we have a a link coming out probably tomorrow or Thursday. May twelve. Yeah. It's coming up. We're very excited because like it's huge for us. We got uh, Sal the Voice doing our national anthem. We got uh, Anthony Rodia throwing the first pitch. It's gonna be awesome. I hope you guys can make it too. Yeah, yeah. I know yeah. you know you guys are soccer guys, but. You know, it's a Sunday. It might be tough. Oh, yeah, yeah. It might be tough, but what, what are you guys doing? What are you guys gonna be week? doing? May twelfth. I mean, yeah. We, we, All May 12th, we okay. had a, like first dibs on who could do the first pitch, and you know, help like organizing it. We organize everything. That's awesome. We have like a whole section to ourselves. If you buy tickets through us, you get a limited edition T-shirt. Nice. If you're a mom, you get a scarf. If you come with like young kids, they run the field like. That's cool really? that they're doing that. Yeah, it's is, awesome. this, yeah. is this the thing that they do all the time? The men? No, they haven't done this since 2013. Oh, yeah, they, they asked us to Why do they it? stop doing it? I don't That's know. Weird. I don't know. I just yeah. I think upper management. There's like some some going some, on. Like, some new management. Not enough people and buying tickets and stuff. Nobody know? took the risk that we're taking. Basically, but, uh, you know, so the uh, Mets okay, actually okay, have like you. two young Italian American kids. Do they? So yeah, it's Brandon oh. Nimmo and Michael Conforto. So it's like. No better team to do it with right now. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Besides the Yankees, like I'll do it with the Yankees. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone's asking, yeah. <laughs> you know, if you're listening. But, but yeah, Mike It'll and, be dope to do it with soccer teams too, you know? Yeah. yeah. Mike and Marco, we just appreciate you guys, you know, reaching out to us, telling us to come on for a podcast, especially after a big Italy win. We're passionate Italian fans, passionate Italians. So and the fact that you guys push the culture and help us push the culture and pushing Serie A in general, shedding light on a league that really has been in the dark before for a Ronaldo while. though too but you know yeah, exactly. you guys before came at the Ronaldo. perfect time keep doing your thing we appreciate all the support you know you guys give us and we look forward to nah, the future you. we've been saying for a long time that we had to find the right time we had to find the right Listen, time man, to do this and if there's anything I love more is the Thai national team I'll take that over every day yeah same like, I'll take one more world cup then ten Champions Leagues or something. Then every anything. Like and Inter even, ever winning a game again. Inter, the Knicks, the Mets, everything. Yeah, like and you Inter too, could right? go. Inter, <laughs> Inter could go to City of Chi. Juve could go to City of Chi. But I agree. Just give me another World Cup. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I need to experience that one more time. All, right? I was too, too young, young for yeah. yeah. I was too young for 2006. I remember it so vividly. I remember it, but it's like so I need being to how old were you? I was 16. I was. You don't appreciate as much. I was. We were. We just. It was. What's the age fifth of grade, fifth two? grade. It was fifth Five grade. Years. Five years. So, Five years. So you were 16. We were 10. 11. We were 10. 11. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, wow. I painted my face green, white, and red for that day. I remember. <laughs> Listen, for any like Italian fans that are listening to this, if you don't get on the bandwagon now in the World Cup time, don't don't, don't hop on. Don't hop on. <laughs> don't ride around 18th Avenue. <laughs> 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 It's right now. We're going to call you out on the spot. Make sure you get kicked out of that parade. That's the ones that would be shooting in the gym. (laughs) You know what's funny? My barber is Brazilian, right? So he was saying when he first came to this country, you know, Brazil and Italy was always the the duo. You know, now you see France France, and whoever fighting at the top. But it was always Brazil and Italy. And he was saying how nice it was even when he came here as a Brazilian. He's like, I used to go to the Italian fans and cheer. And he said, as much as we had a rivalry, it was also a nice rivalry with, um, with Italy. So I think that it does jump you know, cyclical, you know, I don't think we ever expected Italy to be this low per se, you know, not making two not World making Cups and yeah. shit, which sucks, but it's also a life lesson that you have to always be on top of your game and you can't just take for granted. You're at top of the world in 2006. You could be at the bottom in 2010 where you're getting knocked out. Yeah. Yep. So you always got to stay on top of your game. Um, it's something I think about a lot and I, and I think it's important. So guys, I think it was a good episode. Yeah, that, man. That was so happy. Yeah, yeah. Cool that, was, that was awesome. Yo, make Anything sure to like, to subscribe, all that good stuff. Follow you know, at Italian guys. Football TV for our listeners. And, and guys, we're gonna have all the links uh, for growing up Italian, all that it's stuff. It's so at growing up out. Italian, right? So, you know, I just want to shout you guys out because, you know, you guys had your Instagram, you lost it, and you guys are grinding like crazy. And I see like it's coming back. So just keep doing what you're doing, man. The bounce back was real. Not a lot of people can do that. Let yeah, that be said. That was, we, I don't know if we would be able to bounce back yeah, like that. Man, I hope we never have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, you know, stuff. like... Don't ever even think about it. Like, <laughs> bro, yo, that goes... Like, it was a good lesson for us, too. Yeah. yeah. It was a good lesson for... Um, I feel like... Did you guys talk about that ever on a uh, podcast? Yeah, we mentioned it, like, kind of briefly. Yeah, we we're pretty vague, vague about it. Yeah. But I think that the most important thing is that what we're trying to do when we start IFTV, like, you guys, like, we're just trying to be a community. Like, we're not trying to be, like an account like most accounts out there you know where we see ourselves as a media company that creates content and and what i wanted to create was a community for italian fans 
who like or non-Italian, just anyone who likes Serie A or Calcio, to have a place to go. You know, yeah. like right when something happens, you think, where can I go? Where can I interact? Where can I feel like I'm part of something? Yeah. You guys accomplished that. It's no brainer to me. I, I feel like every everyone else, all of my friends, had a place to go to who didn't like Serie A. They all had something. You know, they all had this YouTube channel or page. And there was nothing for me. And I was upset about this. So that's why I wanted to start IFTV. Perfect. And then Michael felt the same way. So I think that the community, like, it's not us that did the bounce back. To me, it's everybody that watches and yeah. listens. And all the support. Yeah, we do our, our work to behind. But I feel like without the real community and people who saw how deep it was for us There's no and how much we put into it, else. we wouldn't have been back, exactly. you know? So I think people notice that. I think that's like the biggest thing for us. Yeah, keep and doing it, man. Yo, the one thing everybody keeps commenting, I always see it in the comments, and uh, not to be mean, like I'm saying it as just like the truth. Everyone's like, yo, you guys deserve so many more followers. I hate that you're not there, but I hate that you lost your account. To me, yo, it's more about the people who are engaged. Yeah, man. Who are with us than the, than the number. You could have a we, million, but if you got two people following exactly. who yeah, are really man. engaged. We'd rather no have a shot in hell with a better community than a, a 500 we got a million community. Like I just want a community, and I yeah. think that you everybody got, helps build that community. You built it. You definitely it. built it. You know. But, yeah, and you guys are doing the same thing with, yeah. with what you're doing and yeah, man, always trying. interacting with We definitely got to collab too. more though in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for other stuff. I got some talent. Stuff. You guys got some talent, like that Luca Antonio. Bro, Luca, uh, collab me, right? Zab. Real quick, <laughs> Luca sure. two times, guys. Just go on Instagram, type in Luca Luca's two times. Luca's the man. That guy's the best. Yo, he's the best out of all of us. Yo, I hate to say this, but I think he's becoming a Juve fan, man. Let's get it. I'm trying to stop it. Let's get it. I'm trying to stop it. He had a Cristiano shirt and then his mom. We were at Wendy Williams say his mom had a Juventus sweater. I'm like, what's yeah. that? <laughs> She's like, my son always wants me to buy Juventus stuff. I'm like, well, stop. <laughs> so, Vino, if you his dad's him. a Napoli fan and his brother's a Milan fan. So that he was a Roma is, fan, though, right? He was yeah. like loving Roma too. Because when I was when I met him, right? he told me he told me Roma. <laughs> yeah, he had a. I got him a Totti jersey when we went to Rome that time. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's he's open. He's open. open. He we'll, loves, we'll he loves over, Tyson. No Sabino, if you give him a D'Ambrosio jersey, you're going to rip off that Ronaldo. <laughs> yeah, D'Ambrosio. Yeah, Nagatomo. Get him a Nagatomo shirt. Oh, or maybe that Cassano jersey. Oh, <laughs> Nobody wants to wear that. Let's be honest. If we do an Antonio Luca collab, I think it would be hilarious. Nah, we're, we're that should come. That, that's, do a little funny video, yeah, you know? something. Like, uh, FIFA. Antonio Luca how to play FIFA. <laughs> Antonio's just he's a type that he doesn't have patience right now. No. Like he, nah. Nah. I feel like if we make him play FIFA, he's just gonna He's too fidgety. It might be he's funny. It might be what funny. What does he do for a living? He's like He's yeah. um he works as like he's a arch- contractor, an architect. architect. He does yeah. a lot of shit. He's, Building he's, a house with Luca. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he's a, a jack of all trades. He's a smart guy, very yeah. smart guy. Um anyway, guys, thank you for coming on. Sabino yeah. Rocco. Appreciate I, it. I appreciate Our you. Our pleasure. Thank on. you for having us. Um, we gotta do this more often. Guys, in the comment section, let us know your thoughts on the Azzurri and everything that we talked about. As always, rate the podcast Mer- March 30th, the drop for the new culture tease. Um, and to check out these Easter guys time. growing up Italian, check out all the links in the bio. We're gonna have it on Instagram, Twitter, right? YouTube. Yeah, we have a Twitter too, right? Yeah. 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 Yo, your Spotify playlist. Genius. Uh, yeah. Genius. <laughs> Go Yo, guys, ta- 12 hours plus of Italian classics. 12 hours? Oh bro, I've been listening God. to it. I've been listening <laughs> to it. Insane. Like in the Good. shower and shit, bro. Yeah, I just yeah, yeah. Lay your hands there, bro. We got another <laughs> We got another. <laughs> we got another. <laughs> we got another. 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 We got the explicit Italian playlist. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, nice. Like Italian trap. Nice. Nice. I like that. Yeah, yeah, we are good. good, Working on it. We'll we'll download that one. (laughs) I like it. Anyway, guys, as always, thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're new. We'll talk to you later. Ciao, Ciao, guys.